In this two-part video series, you will learn everything that you have to know about using fur in V-Ray. In part one, we will discuss the necessary preparation work, cover all basic styling workflows and then try out mapping techniques for additional control. So welcome to this tutorial about first setup in V-Ray and 3ds Max. And in this tutorial series, you're gonna learn everything that you need to know in order to build the first setup for a funny little character like this in here. Because there's a lot of stuff to cover, this video will be split up into two different parts. So while part one covers more of the basics that you need to know, part two goes a little bit in more sophisticated techniques and also will cover the whole part about first shading itself. So in total, there will be a lot of stuff to cover. And for example, we will talk about how to interactively define the length of our fur so that we have different kind of lengths of fur in different parts of our model. We will also talk about how we can add some kind of clumpiness effects here in different parts of our model and also how we can individually define the thickness in different areas. And we will also cover the whole shading aspects of fur shading. So right now you're watching part one and part two is already available right now on my Patreon together with all of the scene files that you need in order to replicate this in here. And there's also a lot of other additional goodies like a whole course on car rendering and all of my scene files for all of my tutorials. So you can check this out if that's interesting for you. Part two later on will most likely also be released on my YouTube. So you can subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified about this. So right here we are at the starting point of our scene and as you can see I prepared this simple character here already and this may not be the most complex character but it's definitely better to try out our fur on this kind of object here compared to the typical teapot or sphere object. So let's see what we can make out of this in here. As you can see, we have already a basic lighting and shading setup and I prepared some kind of subsurface scattering shaders here, mainly for the character itself. We're not gonna go into the details of modeling and shading in this tutorial, but if you wanna know how to build some subsurface scattering shaders, there's a own dedicated video that you can find in my channel about this. So let's quickly check out the body here for our character because that's the part where we're gonna apply the fur onto. You can see we have some evenly spaced out topology here for our body. And then I also went in and applied this unwrap UVW modifier. And we have separate kind of UV islands for all of the different parts of our model. So we have the arms, for example, for left and right. We have the legs for left and right. We have our body, we have the inner mouth and so on. And this may be important later on because you may want to draw texture maps for your fur to style your fur. And this may require UV coordinates. So it's always a good habit to have a clean unwrap here for your character before you start to add any fur. Then what we also can do is to apply a turbo smooth here on top of everything because later on we're going to be using some vertex painting in order to style our fur and this will define one color value for each vertex in here and if you have a bit more polygons here to play with you will get probably nicer and smoother results. So now that we have our model prepared we can easily just find this V-Ray fur button up here in the toolbar and click it to apply some basic fur. You can see we have some kind of interesting result here already. Let me zoom back a little bit and then we can also see a preview here in the viewport. And as you can see, a lot of these kind of fur hairs have been placed on our model at the moment. Of course, it doesn't really look like how we want to. Let's just further define this now in order to get a better result. What I want to do first is that I go in the viewport display and then I just will disable here this icon text and also make the icon size to zero so that we don't have this annoying square in here. And I can just easily select and deselect here my fur with this real-time preview in the viewport itself. And if I want to, I can also go in and define a different number of max hairs, which are shown in my viewport. For example, I can raise this number here. And that's only what is visible here in the viewport. What's rendered anyway is calculated differently. But like this, you can get a closer representation here in the viewport. We can also define the mesh color in here. And let's just choose, for example, this one in here, this kind of purple color, so that we can better see what we are doing in here. And once that's updated, you can see that now we have this purple color in here. And because there's no material applied at the moment, it will just use this mesh color that was applied up here. 
So now in this parameters tab, we can define certain values in here to modify the appearance of our fur. And most of them are kind of self-explaining, but let's go through them really quick. So with the length, you can determine how long your hair is. And in our case, let's use, for example, a length of six centimeters. Then with the radius, you can define how thick your individual hair strands are going to be. Now they would be extremely thick. So let's go back to our original value of 0.2 centimeters. And then with the gravity, we can define if our hair would be attracted by the gravity here. Let's go, for example, to a value of negative two centimeters. And with bend, that's kind of similar. It just determines how bent your hair is. So you can have completely straight hair here, for example. But let's just use a value of one in this case. And then the tapering parameter here defines how thick the tip of your hair is going to be. So the more I increase that, the thinner here the tip will be. And let's use the maximum value of one. That means that our tip basically has a thickness of zero. And I think in this case, that gives a kind of nice appearance in here. So in the next sub tab here, we can define the amount of detail for each of these different hairs in here. And for this, let's just raise our length so we can better see our individual hairs. And you can see that now it is subdividing each hairs here in eight different segments. And if I lower this value, for example, to something like three, you can see that now each hair only has three different segments. And this basically, in this case, wouldn't make the hair appear smooth anymore. So I would need to raise this value up again in order to have the appearance that my hair is kind of smooth. So if you have a lower length, then you may want to decrease this value in here because I think with four knots, it still looks fine from this resolution. And it would mean that a lot less polygons would have to be rendered. You should normally get faster rendering like this way. In our case, let's put this one here back to eight again, because later on, we're gonna have some longer hair here at the top. And then we wanna make sure that we have enough subdivisions here to support the length. So it's also possible to add some curling to the hair. So let's enable this. And let's also increase here the length again so that we can see the curling effect better. So now it's enabled, but it doesn't have any effect because we first need to define our curling radius. So let's put a value of two, for example. And then we need to define also the number of turns. So let's put four turns in here and let's use a slightly lower radius, for example, to 0.5. And now you can see we have this kind of like curling happening here in the hair itself. And you can see that now with these settings, we don't really have enough details here in the hair and we still get this very cornered appearance in here. And for this, we would need then to raise up the geometric detail again. So let's raise that up. And you can see that now in this case, you will get much smoother looking curling effect in here. In our case, let's use a curling radius of 0.5 and a number of curls of one so that we don't have extremely strong curly hair. And let's go back to a length of six centimeters and also reduce the geometric detail back to eight again, because I think we don't really need quite so much detail in there. So here in the variation tab, you can randomize the appearance of each different first trend here a little bit. And this is also kind of self-explaining. So for example, you can randomize the direction and the higher you go in here, the more randomized here the direction of each of these different strands here will be. And now you get kind of a messy appearance. And if you put this all the way to zero, that means the direction is not randomized at all and they all flow in the same direction. That's also how we're gonna leave it here now. Furthermore, there are random variations here of the length, the thickness, the gravity, and the curliness. And in our case, let's make a thickness variation of 0.5 and the curliness variation of 0.5, just to have some kind of random appearance here in our firm, but that they still have the same kind of flow direction in here. So lastly important in here is the distribution tab. And here we can just define basically the amount of hair at the moment that's set to 0.2 per area. The higher you go, the more fur you have. So for example, I will raise this value here to 50. 
And you can see that you have a lot more hair here now to play with. So depending on the look of your fur, you might need to raise this because later on when we're gonna introduce effects like clumpiness and so on, you're only gonna see that once you have enough fur here available. But now for testing, let's put this back here to a value of 0.2. So just that we get faster feedback. So those were most of the basic parameters in here. And now we're gonna move on here to the mapping section of our fur. And that is quite important to get a realistic look because all of these values in here, they just define the overall appearance of your fur. But in order to make your fur really fit to your character, you definitely have to use mapping techniques. And that's what we're gonna dive into now. But before we do that, let's download and install a kind of forgotten plugin, which is the V-Ray Fur Styler that's available here on the MISC Tools page on the Chaos website. You can download that for most of the 3ds Max versions. And the plugin is kind of forgotten and also not really integrated into V-Ray because it has its kind of quirks. So in order to install it, you need to follow the descriptions here on the website. We're not gonna do that together because I think it's kind of self-explaining, but I think it's not really integrated by default because as I said, it has its kind of quirks, but I still wanted to show you how this basically works because it can be very useful in certain kind of situations. So now back in 3ds Max, let's try out how this V-Ray first styler works. And for this, we have to select here our base object. And the V-Ray first styler doesn't really like any kind of modifier stack in here. So best is to just collapse everything that you just have an editable mesh or editable poly here as a base. And then let's add the V-Ray first style modifier. So the V-Ray first styler uses vertex mapping in order to draw the bend direction and the initial direction. And for this, you have to create two different vertex map, one with a channel of two and one with a channel of three. And this I prepared here already in the material editor. So you can see this one has channel two and this one has channel three. And now we need to go to our fur and link these two different maps into the bent direction and then also this one here into the initial direction. Once you do this, nothing should change here about the direction of your fur. If something changed, then something is wrong and you should restart these steps in here. And now we can select here our base mesh. And I think let's first check here a different view mode. So let's switch this one to object color. Like this, we can see our fur here more easily. And now we can select here this fur brush and then really start drawing our fur. We can change the radius also here for the brush and basically start to comp here the hair along our geometry. And this can make it quite useful in certain kind of situations where you want to have a exact flow here of the fur. You can see sometimes it works quite good, sometimes it doesn't really work so good. And you need to sometimes play around a little bit until you maybe will get the result that you want to. But I just thought I will show you this kind of modifier in here because that can be quite helpful in certain situations. In our case, we're not gonna use that. So let's reset here these two channels and then let's delete this modifier because we will use some texture maps to draw our bend direction. So back here in the fur, I deleted these two vertex maps so that we have a clean slate to start from again. And the first thing I want to do is that I want to remove all of the hair, which is in the mouth, for example. And for this, I prepared here a texture map, which can be mapped into the density of the fur. So this map is quite simple. Basically just the black parts define where I have zero density and the white parts define where I have full density. So let's map this into the density slot and you can see immediately that the fur here in the mouth disappears and we don't really have this unwanted effect here anymore. Now, instead of using the vertex map here in the bend direction, I have also a texture prepared and this inputs here some RGB color map. So some of them input a black and white map. Those are marked here with mono and the ones that allow colors are marked here with RGB. So I have this kind of colorful clouds in here and let's just map this into the bend direction and see what happens. 
So once this here is mapped into the bend direction, you can see we have a very strong effect in here. We can then play with the tiling to change the size here of our texture. You can see we get a smaller pattern here already. Let's do a quick render and see how this looks like. And you can see we have some very, very strong effect right now. So an easy way to adjust it is to just map this here through a simple color correction node and then map this into our bend direction. And then in the contrast tab in here, we can basically dial in the intensity. So if I go all the way here to negative 100, we have basically nothing here in the bend direction. And if I increase this here towards zero or even higher than zero, then it will have a very, very strong effect. In our case, let's use, for example, negative 75 in here. And let's do a quick rendering and see how this compares. So this is how it was before. And now you can see with less intensity, we just have this kind of wavy pattern here. And in this case, I want to even reduce this, let's say to a negative 90 here, so that we just have a very, very subtle effect here on the fur. So now we use one map for the density and one for the bend direction. And I want to introduce a new map now for the length. And the effect I want to achieve is some kind of clumpiness so that it looks like some of the fur here sticks together, like it would be a little bit greasy. And there's not really any option natively built into V-Ray to achieve this kind of effect, but you can use some kind of cheat in order to get a very similar effect. So for this, we will use just a composite map in the length here, and then just drag our composite into our material editor. And you can see that our hair here completely disappeared. So for this, we just need to add a new V-Ray color in here and then just switch this color to complete white and map this into our composite base layer. And once we do this, our hair will come back and we can also now define the length of our hair by just playing here with this slider. So if I make this darker, the hair will become shorter. So now in our composite, we can add a new layer and then just add a standard cellular map in here. And then once we have this, we can define here different values. You can see it has some kind of effect already. Let's make a smaller size, for example, in this case, two. And you can see we already have a kind of clumping effect in here. We can define here different spread value. And I think like this, it looks already kind of interesting. We can then increase the amount of hair here so that we can really see the clumping effect here better. And then in our composite, we can just put this to multiply mode so that basically we still have our base color here that has effect for the length of our fur. So part one for this tutorial ends here now because we covered all of the basics. And in part two, we will go a little bit more in some advanced techniques. We will, for example, define different kind of length of fur here across our model. We will do this in an interactive way. And then we also will blend here our clumpiness effect to only appear on the longer parts of the fur. And finally, we will also do some nice lighting and shading setup here for our fur so that everything comes nicely together. So part two is already available right now on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering, the scene files and lots of other additional stuff if you want to check that out. Otherwise, subscribe to this channel to be notified once part two is released on YouTube. Until then, take care.